and everyone feels my coming at ya. Over the last several weeks here on the channel, we've been taking a deep dive into render streaming and playing around with it to see what we can do and learn in the process of using this for rendering applications on one computer and sending that video feed to another. Ultimately, in my mind, it was kind of a lead up basically to this video and the next several sets of videos we'll be doing here on the channel around Unity render streaming incorporated with WebXR and leveraging CloudXR. I know that was a lot of buzzwords, but in this video, I really wanna dive into what that sentence really means and why it's important. Ultimately, by the end of these videos, I do wanna to get to the point where we have this open standard that anyone can leverage where you are integrating all of these tools in one seamless SDK, and you can actually start building games using this open standard for WebXR and CloudXR. If you do have questions broadly about anything I say in this video, definitely let me know down in the comments below or more specifically anything broadly around the CloudXR topic. If you are excited for the ultimate vision of actually having an SDK where you can actually start playing around with cloud rendering and cloud XR, definitely make sure you're subscribed because you won't want to miss all of the upcoming videos around those topics. So let's first start with the what, which is what is cloud XR? What is remote rendering? What is the web XR? So starting with render streaming, since that's what we've talked about initially over the last several videos, we do have videos here on the channel. If you haven't watched them, I definitely encourage you to take a look as they'll start to get you up at least at a high level of what the topic is. But broadly, it is the concept of being able to say run Unity on one device, take the camera data from a camera in your scene, stream that over the internet, to a web browser, for example, or really any other device, and show that within the context of the browser or more broadly within the context of whatever is displayed on screen. So it's really just kind of capturing a video stream and sending it to another device. What is CloudXR then? So CloudXR is, instead of it being just a video feed that happens on a display, we are gonna send the video feed of two cameras to each separate eye so that you get that stereoscopic view. And in order to make sure everything's happening in real time, we're gonna be sending the positional rotational data of your head as well as controllers to Unity. Unity can then use that data to update the scene and then accordingly can go ahead and send the video streams back to your browser in this case, to actually view within VR. And that browser part is where the WebXR piece comes in, which is now the ability for you to, instead of having to run your own application, these video streams can come in through the web, and then you can display that within VR using the WebXR APIs. So if you go to a WebXR page, within your browser, say on the Oculus Quest, you can then start viewing these video streams within VR as stereoscopic cloud XR. So that's kind of the three different layers um, of the pieces that are really kind of working in tandem here to make everything happen. So you have render streaming to, to set up that technology to connect your devices together. You have the cloud XR, which is responsible for taking the input and sending that to Unity and the render streaming piece so that it can update the visuals accordingly. And then you have WebXR as the APIs that enable all of this to happen together. So that's everything that's happening here at a very high level. But now you might be asking, why does any of this matter? And the reality of this is, is that you could use CloudXR for a whole slew of things. And there's so much value in being able to take the application logic or game logic of from the device and kind of that whole kind of centralized ecosystem, if you will, and moving it to a place that is completely independent, but if you have the right latency, will be more than sufficient to feel as if the rendering is happening on your device. So for starters, I mean, the very obvious case that everyone goes to with CloudXR is you now have that ability to go ahead and render very high polygons and things on a very fancy GPU, say architectural diagrams that you wouldn't traditionally be able to do. 
The other case is simply Oculus tends to be a walled garden and sometimes for whatever reason, they won't let certain apps onto the store. They might not publicize it. If payments are involved, they're gonna be taking a cut of it. And because it's a closed ecosystem, they can do really whatever they want. And it's very frustrating kind of from a developer standpoint to have to be forced to deal with this because it's Oculus, right? So by leveraging Cloud XR, you can move all of that application logic away from the device. The advantage being you can run whatever code you want to and Oculus can't really say anything or do anything about it. Of course, Oculus recognizes this exact conundrum and so they've gone out of their way to actually block Cloud XR applications from running on their app store and even on App Lab. So from a practical standpoint, there are really only two ways to get a Cloud XR application running on Quest. The first is to sideload it. Slide loading can be a pain. And the second is to use an open standard like WebXR. Okay, that seems like the more natural and easy way to get everything working. A user can simply go to a website and they can connect to whatever game they want and that can stream in to their device and they're up and running practically within no time without having to do anything fancy. It's a very frictionless way to, to go about it. And it's done in a way that makes it very hard for Oculus to really censor. So in a nutshell, that's why I wanted to build this out. And I think it's incredibly important for it to be an open standard that developers can target if they like. Because of the fact that this is WebXR, yes, I've been talking a lot about the Oculus ecosystem because it is that walled garden that is the most popular that everyone wants to target. But this applies also to any HTC standalone headset. It'll apply to any headset that supports the WebXR APIs and open VR standards. And so as a developer, you now have the choice. If I want to build outside of that ecosystem, but target the wide plethora of devices, I want to give people that option in a Cloud XR rendering environment. And I think it's incredibly powerful to build something like that that is completely open, where developers are in control of what they're building and where it ends up getting used and what APIs that they want to incorporate into their app applications. And the reason to put this out in the community is because quite frankly, what has been built is purely still kind of prototype-ish. I mean, there, there's a lot of optimizations that can be made and custom tweaked as, as needed for every different, different application. So in that sense, I think it's incredibly important for it to be something that the community can kind of get behind and grow together and really say, this is what we want VR to be. And we want it to be ultimately free and censorship resistant, not being controlled by these monopolies and giant corporations that dictate exactly how they want the ecosystem to grow. And I, I really can't stress enough how incredibly freeing that would be to see, to be able to basically put the middle finger up to these companies that really want to control and nickel and dime everything without our control and consent. Look forward to a few more videos here, kind of diving deeply into the architecture of what Cloud XR is and how it works with the WebXR framework, and then ultimately becoming that SDK that you'll be able to use and try out and see if that fits your needs or ultimately if there are things you'd want to see change to eventually kind of start building out games for a WebXR Cloud XR ecosystem. Until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.